from Clearpoint. Absolutely. We had Judge Roy Moore on. Uh, he joined us for the show. We had Mark Meadows on, who's been a been a Judge Roy Moore supporter from the outset. We had Rick Santorum on. And Rick Santorum came back on this morning as well, talking about the Graham Cassidy Bill. Such a heck of a show last night. Um, but it's extraordinary. You know, we were in Montgomery a couple of days ago. We then came down to Mobile. We went to the Chestang's 15th Annual Bluegrass Festival. Right? By the way, rumor had it, because uh, all the uh, all the major media types from The Guardian and from uh, Financial Times, all the international news went to this. Uh, bluegrass festival uh, word had it that you were in a three-piece suit i, was, I don't know i don't know i don't suit. know a saturday night <laughs> saturday night in rural alabama i don't know if wearing a three-piece suit is exactly the same thing. i will a little formal attire i wore my sport coat with the with the american flag inside the lining that's what i did that's the, the and, and and yeah uh one of the girls from the atlantic rosie gray she took a picture she said look at look at raheem she said i asked raheem why he was here at the bluegrass mm-hmm. festival the chestang bluegrass festival down here in southern alabama and raheem responded i just like bluegrass <laughs> <laughs> let's go to let's go to the calls now I'm gonna, there's going to be a lot of people on here that, 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 sure. that, that want to talk to us about this stuff but the, the the alabama race is absolutely fascinating you guys are rallying tonight here just outside mobile it's going to be you phil robertson judge roy moore and nigel Farage. Well, well, this is i'm really proud of this is that you've got i think the three um three of the earliest and most uh, prominent uh, or not prominent but uh uh, all-in diehard supporters of President Trump, and that is Nigel Farage from uh, UKIP, the United Kingdom Independence Party, uh, Phil Robertson uh, of Duck Command, the Duck Commander, who I was so honored to make the film Torchbearer that we were about to release in August when I jumped into the campaign, the mm-hmm. film. In fact, I was teeing up as we talked in the show on August 12th, the, the last show I did in 2016. We were getting ready to release the picture that we worked on for over a year, which was really a picture for the evangelical mm. base uh, to come out in September. And so the, the film, which we may re-release here this fall, we got Duck Commander coming in. And uh, obviously the Breitbart crew uh, represented, I'm proud to represent the entire Breitbart crew tonight at the uh, rally. Absolutely. The Faith and Family rally at the Oak Hollow Farms tonight, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be a big one. Uh, the, before before you announced you were coming down, uh, they 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 had they sold they sold like 500 more uh, RSVPs uh, when when you announced. Then they announced that Nigel was coming. There was another 500 people signing up. This thing is going to be packed out. Okay. All the world. Are you media saying Nigel, Nigel br- br- draws as big a crowd as I? Did. I said I said same size. <laughs> I said same size. You have to. Understand. Nigel said it was bigger. So I, 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 yeah. yeah. You have to understand. I work for both of you for the same amount of time. I can't play favorites. Uh, let's uh, let's go to uh, Marianne in Delaware, one of our regulars. You probably remember her, Steve. Oh, sure. Marianne in Delaware. Hey, Long Marianne. Seats. How you doing? Hi, Steve. I had no idea you were going to be on the show. You've made my day because I was so depressed yesterday. And thanks, Raheem, for putting me on. Thanks, the call screeners. I'm so excited. How are you? We miss you. I'm doing good. What do you? What do you? What, what, what you've done for us? What, what are you depressed about? Oh, yesterday, and you know, I'm a reti- um, I'm not a retired military wife. I'm married to a retired military officer right. who flies. And um, I was very, I mean, I, I won't watch football, and I'm a huge Patriots fan. And, you know, I knew they were, you know, as, uh, obviously as soon as the president made those statements, I knew what we were in. But when you see it, you know, what we were in what we were going to end up seeing yesterday. But when you end up seeing, when you end up hearing it, you see the pictures, it was just heartbreaking. And I completely forgot that they had a game in London, which was even more upsetting. And they had the game, Mar- Marianne, they had the game in London and they're standing yes. for the, they're standing for God Save the Queen. They're not standing for your own national anthem. I mean, I mean, what, what's going through these people's minds? What, what sort of philosophy does that tell you that these guys have? A, more, a, a communist this is this is I'm, by the way colin kaepernick's the guy that started this marianne right he's out there for, uh, he's out there wearing a fidel castro t-shirt this is not about hey we have some criticisms about the united states is it these guys these guys are full-on anti-us types absolutely and you know and i'm going to stand by my people who died and um and number one mm. is our friend chris adams who died in the Kobach Towers, he was one of 19 Americans that were killed um, in a terrible attack. I think, Steve, you know about that. And sure. there's plenty of um, literature on it to see what happened to them. Um, I have another friend, um, you know, and it'll be almost 25 years in November that, um, you know, and it was a training mission. It wasn't an attack. 
but he died in a um, 2141 collision over Montana. And it, the, the two mm. planes were out of McCord. They were on a training mission. He had just got reassigned P, um, PCS, and I don't yeah. even think he was in Seattle for well, a couple it, 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 even Even giving your life in a training mission is giving your life for a country. So, Marianne, look, I, it, you, you've just talked about why you shouldn't be depressed. You know, you've got the from every patriot grave as as lincoln said uh you know that we've got this unbroken chain of uh of patriotism so i wouldn't i wouldn't worry too much about this and uh you know th- this will um you know this will pass but i think yeah. it's uh marion thank you so much for the call don't be depressed continue to listen to breitbart news uh news daily and, and get your morning uh, jolt of uh, optimism you think, you think but you i gotta think, tell you, you very very things gonna pass I think it, I'll think of you know th- it's got to be a process, right? Mm-hmm. Clearly, some it's a big, huge media story mm-hmm. now. I think the thing you br- bring up yesterday is that what would people in the in the in the great uh, revolution, uh, you know, 1775, 1776, 1777, uh, all the years it took us to, to to fight the British, what would those guys be saying about guys who stood for God save the Queen right. and did not uh, and knelt for the uh, for the national anthem? Right. I wonder what those patriots would have to say. That's exactly right, and it and it really hurt me yesterday being at Wembley as well because it's it's just a couple of years ago when they didn't allow English soccer players to wear the poppy on their arm, right? Because they said for it was the, too much for of a political for, for remember Day. Day. Yeah, for they for, said it was for, too political, for, but they'll let these guys do that yesterday yeah, wow. at Wembley as well. Thanks so. Raheem Kassam. That's where we get the that's where we get the editor in chief of, uh, of Breitbart uh, News London. A second <laughs> deed, second deed here to the United States. Let's get a Ted in Georgia who's online. Yeah. By four. the way, Marion, thanks for that call. Hey, Ted, how you doing? Man, what an what an honor! Uh, Stephen K. Bannon, Raheem Kassam, <laughs> as a as a retired Air Force veteran, I do request permission to come aboard, not only aboard but aboard the bridge, if it's all right with you, sir. Uh, permission granted, sir. Come on board. Glad to <laughs> hear that. Awesome. Good to I hear got you, a, sir. A couple of issues to unpack, sure. and it's just so damn good to have you back, man. Um, Thanks, brother. I got a few things to unpack, brother. Um, First of all, I was going to talk about, you know, what was going on yesterday with the young lady was talking about. Um, I want to get back to that as far as that goes. But I want to first say, uh, Stephen K. Bannon, I've always stood tall and strong as far as being uh, behind you. I know you caught a lot of flack. I'm 100 percent Jewish and going up against these uh, these left hating Americans. But no look, one, let's talk. Let's, 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 uh, yeah, let's talk about the flack no though. One, the flack, is, yeah, the flack is because they don't want to hear your voice. You know, I'm just, uh, I'm just another schmendrick, as you would say. I'm, I'm just another yeah. guy. <laughs> that, that, a no, I, I, and a schmuck <laughs> and a punk, no, all the but, above, all the above. Uh, and the and, reason, the reason they and, give and me I, such a hard time, they won't, they don't want to hear your voice. Your voice is the one they don't want to hear. Trust me. You, you, you've definitely got that right. So I have to stand toe to toe with these Beatles. <laughs> and 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 I and I, I want to uh, thank you so much for not only standing for the Jewish state, but you do stand for the Jewish people. And and Breitbart has deep ties to uh, you know for supporting Israel and standing behind and with Jews. Mm. You know, I, I met uh, I met Joel Pollack. He came to Atlanta. I'm, yeah. I'm from I'm from yeah. Mobile, by the way. I grew up in Mobile, Alabama, right across the bay from where you're at right now. T- this, is right. God, this is God's Grand country Hotel. right here. This is God, God's country right here, we're, brother. We're, Ted, we're lucky enough to be watching to be literally watching the sun rising up behind us here over the uh, over the Gulf Coast. Absolutely beautiful morning down here. I've never been here as well. There's this huge map on my on my on my on my wall just behind me. It's it's an absolutely extraordinary place. I think, Ted, I, I think that's called a chart, but that's okay. Stephen okay, K, sorry, Stephen sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes, yeah, sorry, naval commander. Sailing on Mobile Bay at a Fairhope Marina. At wow. a Fairhope Marina, right where you're at, as a little boy. And grow up winning the Air Force. But anyway, I wanted to, okay, I appreciate that. Just one last issue to yeah, unpack. Yeah, the yeah. left are a bunch of bullies, and they're using this thing with uh, on the field. The owners are bullies. The media are bullies. The players that are taking a knee are bullies. And guess who they all answer to? They don't answer to the owners. They don't answer to Goodell, who's another bully. They answer to the fans. Mm. All of them answer to the fans and the taxpayers who are subsidizing their stadiums. It's out Amen. of control. <laughs> Amen, brother. Ted, thank you so much for the call. Really appreciate it, brother. Um, by you the way, that's well. I'm, I'm very – Ted brings up a good point. Yeah. There's no site uh, in the United States that's more uh, pro-Israel or more pro-the-Jewish people. You know, the, the site, uh, Raheem, done such – by the way, you personally – 
<laughs> have done such an amazing job on the plight of the Jews in Europe. I mean, it's one of the reasons we set up Breitbart News London. You guys done an extraordinary job. The, uh, the uh, We set up with Aaron Klein and the team over there in Israel, uh, Breitbart uh, Jerusalem. We've got, we've done, the, we're at the cutting edge of this whole BDS, anti-BDS mm. thing. And also the plight of young Jewish kids on these college campuses, you know, following the, the plight of Ben Shapiro and other guys right. as they've done it. Ben, one of our former editors. So, uh, you know, we're, it's not, we're, I mean, it's not even that. It's, it, you go back, it's not even, it's, it's all the people who are at Breitbart now have a, such a long tradition of doing right. this stuff too. I mean, right. tw- in 2012, I was over there uh, for, for Operation Pillar of Defense that was going on at the time. My appendix exploded when I was in Israel there to give me an open appendectomy in an Israeli hospital. Hospital, uh, and they couldn't believe it when that when they took my passport out to check you know check my details and stuff that my name's Raheem Kassam because of course Kassam are the name of the rockets that Hamas fires uh, over, right. over the border in Gaza. Right. I had the mayor of Sterot, the closest town to Gaza, laughing at me. He showed me up against his wall this huge uh, uh, shells of Kassam rockets out there. Wow. People people in this company have the longest standing traditions for that stuff. Yep. This is why the criticism doesn't stand, doesn't make any sense. I want to keep 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 up on the phone lines now. Eight six six nine five seven two eight Seven four. You got Raheem Kassam. You got Stephen K. Bannon here in Mobile, Alabama. Let's go to George in Oklahoma City on line three. George, good morning. Hey, Raheem. I wanted to make a, a statement. I, uh, uh, I wanted to make a statement about yourself and, uh, and Nigel Barrage. Hmm. But before I do that, I'd like to make a request from your from your special guest that I haven't done in a long time. Permission to board, Skipper. Uh, permission granted, brother. Come on board. That's good to hear that again. You got the deck. You got the deck. You got, you the, got the deck. Yeah, you got the deck. I got the con. How about that? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, Raheem, I wanted to. I just wanted to say that you know, you as a European, and and Nigel, what you guys, what you two have gone through, you guys are like messengers of what awaits us if we do, if this country does not make the right decisions. The the, the political oppression that you two have have gone through. It right. reminds me, you, you, guys, you guys pay homage to one of your greatest uh, statesmen, Winston Churchill. Mm. Never, never, never give up. And that's my yes. Welcome back. Yeah, this, 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 by the way, George, thank you so much. This, this is uh, the George nailed it. Is this that, is why you opened the London Bureau. This is exactly, George, you nailed it right there. Is that, in fact, it was in two, right at the 2012 election. I started looking at what was going on. In a, in a deeper uh, manner, this is another thing about the great thing about the callers, they always get it right, is that um, the um, in seeing what was going on in, in Europe and particularly in the United Kingdom, it looked like it could be a canary in the mine shaft. I think I flew over yes. in like mid-2013 uh, and and uh, and saw um, and saw uh, Raheem, and, and remember we started talking about lunch. You, met, you met Shrinking Violet. Yeah, Del- <laughs> D- Raheem and Delling Paul, we met Niger and everything like that. So, George, thank you so much for the call. It's fantastic. Really appreciate it. And, and, and this nails another thing. We've always said the United Kingdom in Europe is a, a canary in the mine share for the United States. George nailed it. Exactly where you think you're going to go. Are you going to go? Okay, George, thank you so much for the call. Really appreciate it. Just outside Mobile, Alabama, where the center of the political universe is now uh, is now here for the next couple of days. Uh, Raheem, a big rally tonight. Huge rally tonight uh, uh, the, down there at uh, just just outside Fairhope in, in Alabama. Everybody's looking forward to it. Let me let me know, look. There's a there's a there's a big elephant in the room here right now. Okay, uh, that Nigel Farage got higher, bigger cast. <laughs> hey, that Nigel Farage get the seven o'clock hour. That's a, just you know just. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. You know, well we'll save the best for last. Look, the big elephant in the room here right now. Everybody's talking about it, and we, so we need to address it. This Judge Roy Moore rally tonight is happening the same time uh, as 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 the Vice President coming into town doing. A rally on behalf of Luke is that, the, Strange, is that right? the same time it's the same time right is that the same time yeah funny how that works yes yeah, it's, it's a total coincidence <laughs> total, total coincidence. and utter coincidence. Hey, it is a coincidence but here's the thing here's yeah. you know here's I, I have been down here now for a couple of days yeah. and i'm talking to people i'm talking to a lot yeah. of people i only found one strange voter by the way right so far since i've been down here talking to dozens of people yeah. but steve there are people out there who are saying look we love judge more right we're just not sure about letting the president down what do you think I think, look, here's the thing is that we, you know, said from day one when I stepped out of the White House and, you know, as Breitbart's been uh, pretty adamant, we're, um, you know, we're anti-establishment. We think the establishment's done a terrible job of having the president's back in his uh, in his cause in his first year. Uh, and I think it's incumbent upon everybody to uh, to support uh, President Trump. President Trump's uh, doing uh, doing a good as job as anybody could uh, possibly ask, but he needs support. And I got to tell you. The establishment is is not supporting him and led by Mitch McConnell. It's just, you know, it's 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 an open secret on Capitol Hill. And you can see how they've handled this, uh, how they've handled this, um, 
this campaign, which is, is un, unacceptable and unsatisfactory. Let's talk about it for a second. Was it 30? If you add up the first round, the second round, over $30 million of corporate money, you know, this corporatist donor, um, you know, consultant, lobbyist, uh, politician cabal, this cartel that runs Washington, D.C. They've taken over $30 million. And what have they done? This hasn't been a policy discussion down here, Raheem. This has been... They're not uh, pumping up their candidate, are No, they? no, no. They feel they're trying to destroy. It's, it's a politics of personal destruction. It's what Andrew Breitbart absolutely hated. So we're proud. Listen, this is the, this is the absolute core base of the Trump revolution, right? Uh, what Judge Moore, uh, the folks that are supporting Judge Moore. And that's what you look. You look at Sarah Palin. Uh, Phil Robertson, Nigel Farage, uh, the Breitbart crew, uh, Hannity, you know, Steve, Ingram, Han- Ingram you just Levin, go Levin, Gorka, my, my, Dr. Michael Savage. You just go down the thing. This is this is the hardest core of the Trump uh, base, and of course we support the President of the United States. Uh, but we understand that support the President of the United States, you have to go. You have to stand up to the establishment. They don't have his back. And and and, and another thing, if a, if 32 million dollars is coming in from the uh, from the Washington clique. You know, Luther Strange is is bought and paid for uh, by the establishment, by the cartel. So that's it's called, it's called Tide Aid. Okay, I believe in, I believe in the foreign affairs, what they call Tide Aid. Uh, we got we we put a call out to uh, to all our Alabamians out there to call in. We got Lisa in Alabama on line three. Lisa, good morning. Oh, good morning, y'all. Thank you so much for taking my call. I am so honored to talk to both of you. It's just hey, huge. Well, thank, well, thanks for you were honored to have you on the show. How you doing? Well, I'm doing okay. Um, I kind of just, I gave another name. It's not a real name, but I'm so involved with Alabama politics and get involved in local campaigns around mm. here. Um, just didn't want my other name being shown. Yeah. Now, listen, um, I, I, I can't take all my time complaining about the fact that this Senate race has become so nationalized. Mm. Um, it is what it is. I hate that so much attention is placed on it just because really both candidates are flawed candidates. Um, at first, I used to be perfectly happy with Luther Strange being in the Senate position. Um, you know, I was happy with him, you know, through several years of serving in Alabama politics for the most part. Um, uh, but it really has started coming more and more to light. And when you talk to people within the state legislature, corruption is just now linked with Luther Strange. And so wow. I'm proud of our I'm proud of our Alabama Republicans. The fact that. You know, we ousted a Republican governor for his corruption and his moral failings. And that's what we should stand for is, you know, Republicans don't put up with that kind of mess. You know, it's just Lisa, it just seems to me as well that they're not doing themselves any favors. Right. I mean, Luther Strange's campaign using using Soros funded research and all of that kind of thing. They're not exactly proving to us that they're, 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 they're our people. Right. Right, right. And his, so, and, you know, it's unfortunate, but his name is sullied. And, you know, Mitch McConnell is not liked in Alabama at all. And so now right. that, now that Luther Strange has hitched his persona to the Mitch McConnell bandwagon, it's just a lose for him. Yeah, there is that side that people don't want to disappoint the president or the vice president, but it's actually very annoying that they've gotten so involved. And I think a bad decision on their part. Well, I However, think I think the, I think the reason is that you're, you're you're they've gotten some bad information, but I think the people down here in Alabama, particularly particularly their base, is uh, is you know going to hopefully you know tell them that hey, this is what's really happening down here in Alabama. Before we let you go, Lisa, one question: Why, why you say why you say it's negative about why you say it's negative about uh, about um, uh, bringing on making more? these things? No, 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 not about having these uh, Senate races become nationalized, become actually national referendums. Well, because because Roy Moore is a flawed candidate. There are a lot of things that I have really appreciated about him. And I think if we put everything on paper, I agree with him and appreciate his stand. But he's also known he's he's arrogant and he is. um, This is the advice that I would strongly, strongly please pass on. Mr. Bannon is that I think partially I hope he wins. I'm still on the fence. I might just write in Mo Brooks. I don't know. (laughs) But. Um, if I don't, then I would vote for Roy Moore. But my prayer, my heavy prayer is, is that when he moves from the primaries and goes into the general elections, that the overarching theme is humility mm. Mm. and that he he is known for more than just the caricature that the media here makes of him. Well, that that's what, if l- l- he l- can send the message, hold on just yeah. a second. If he yeah. can send the message, he's humble. And that it, he brings more to light of how bad the Democratic Party is because yep. the Doug Jones candidate is a likable fellow. 
Um, and he needs to keep highlighting. We need to keep highlighting just how bad the blue dot messages, the mm. Democrat messages, yeah. like you know, uh, message, you know, Raheem's yeah. Raheem's book, yeah. um, and then also D'Souza's latest book, The Big Lie. Those are the things that need to really be brought out to educate people. So it's not just more about Roy Moore; it's about how good the movement is. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? I would totally right, see what you're saying. Right. Lisa, fantastic call once again. By the way, you know, one thing I wanted to say, Lisa, thank you so much. This is one of the reasons uh, Donald Trump's president of the United States, and, and I mean this for all the people out in the audience, is that uh, the knowledge that we were able to, 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 to derive from the callers in the comment section of, uh, of yeah. Breitbart, Breitbart News Radio. I was about to say this. The Daily, I mean, the, the callers, everyone, is, is just the wisdom of the American people, the wisdom of the American working people, middle class, comes through every day on the show. With these callers, I mean, right there, this is more sophisticated analysis than you get on CNN or. or, or Here's the thing. I mean, this this incredible. audience has been canceling yeah. their their cable TV subscriptions yeah. for years yeah. now, right? Yeah. Now, and then look at this year. Variety magazine runs this thing that 20 plus million people canceled uh, uh, over the last year. This audience wow. is pi a pioneering yeah. audience. They're yes. the ones who always move first. Yes. Uh, Lisa, but, great call. Here's, here's the thing. Yeah. Lisa said about the the, the flawed yeah. candidates. You and I both have experiences of of working with yeah. flawed candidates, yeah. right? By the way, by the way, and this is something you know, Donald Trump would never say. President Trump would never say. He's a perfect individual. Right. And neither would Nigel Farage. It is Nigel right. Farage. Right. They have, a, it, look, you know, it, it, particularly if you're a member, you know, if you believe in, uh, a belief in the Judeo Christian tradition, you know, man has fallen. Man is imperfect. That we're not, you know, Judge Moore is far from a perfect candidate. He'd be the first uh, to say that. And I think Lisa's thing is something that all of us, uh, from the President of the United States on down, ought to, ought to think of, you know, think through every day is humility and being humble when you, particularly when you go, you know, go against this kind of opposition and, it's so easy sometimes to get self-righteous and arrogant and all that. So I think it's Lisa, great call. Thank you. And by the way, I think Judge Moore, if he's uh, lucky enough to get the support of the people of Alabama tomorrow and win, uh, I think you'll see him in the uh, in the general election. Just not be formidable, but I think also be uh, be uh, uh, quite humble. We've got another uh, call for you, Steve. I think somebody wants to ask you a question. Milan is in Ontario on line six. Milan. Good morning. morning, everybody. To say that it's an honor and a pleasure to speak to all three of you would be the understatement of the year. <laughs> well, thanks, brother. Thank you, you very much for yeah. everything that you do. Uh, my first, I, I have two questions. I have a question for Mr. Bannon and a question for Mr. Farage. Uh, uh, Nigel has left the building, unfortunately, Milan. But oh, yeah. he's, he, okay. but, but, but he's here in spirit. He's he, here in spirit. He, he had to go and get a gin. <laughs> he, he has. He, his, got, he, went, he went past seven a.m. He had to get a gin. Yes, yes. Hold it. He, but he has his factotum. Raheem Gassam is, uh, is, <laughs> is, is is filling in. Oh, go that's ahead, awesome. Man. So, so I get extra time with Mr. Bannon, which is awesome. Yep. I I do want to ask you: uh, Do you have any intentions as a company to open up an office? or an outlet in Canada. We have, we, we, we have a pool running yeah. Canada here into the ground. <laughs> and we, and I can say that the Liberal Party of Canada makes the U.S. Democrats look like a good bunch of people. And the, <laughs> and the nauseating, politically correct uh, left-wing media up here, oh my goodness, um, Raheem, does we, CBC we, we, make BBC look like a, a, a no. right wing? <laughs> look, look, here's the reason we are going to launch in, in Canada and other places. There will be more announcements. Uh, by the way, thank you so much for the call. Great to hear your voice again. Uh, Raheem, as you know, we're working on a lot of plans, international expansion and, and more detailed expansion in other verticals here in the United States like finance and other areas. But international expansion, particularly to our brothers up in Canada, uh, which got a great conservative base up there. And, uh, and and Trudeau, who's actually, you know, the people around him I've met, and, and they're they're actually terrific people. They are they are hardcore they're hardcore lefties. <laughs> but uh, and Breitbart Canada will be a great uh, a great thing. Is we're also going to do global expansion around the uh, around the uh, around the world. It's one of the things I'm so glad to be back at the company, so we can finally get uh, kickstart our global I, expansion. I, I, I've been saying this for so long now about Canada as well, especially and, and, and even Australia. But Canada, you know, let's not forget this is the place where they had M103, right? This bill yeah. that banned. Islamophobia, right now. Okay, fine. It was a, it was a, 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 a. Would your book be able to be? If that bit, book had, if that. I can translate passed, it into Canadian. No, 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 no. But if that bill had passed, could you actually release your book? No. And, uh, no. By the way, if you haven't had a chance, Raheem's book, uh, I think is one of the best books of the summer. And it's the summer. There's a lot of terrific uh, books have come out. Huge. Uh, including Devil's Bargain, the best. No, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, no, but Raheem, your book is fantastic. But it could could it get published in Canada if that law was passed? No, I don't think it could even get published in the United Kingdom at this point without somebody bringing me to court over it. 
you know the, the 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 book is the book is so forthright about the problems that, that that we're facing and and by the way here's the thing you know it sold a ton of copies it went on the publisher's weekly bestseller list i know all the opposition have read it why haven't there been any hit pieces against me for it because it's all true they can't pick not any of these things apart. Fantastic. It's ex- extraordinary stuff. Milan, thank you so much for your call here this morning on Breitbart News Daily. 866-957-2874 is the number. You've got Stephen K. Banny, you've got Raheem Kassam broadcasting from Point Clear live here in Alabama. Coming back to you guys on the phone lines now. Make sure you're on the trigger. Is it on the trigger? Fa- on the trigger. Fast on the, the trigger. Quick, quick on the trigger. That's the, the, I got to get a little trigger fast. I got a little rust today. I got to kind of worry. <laughs> Glad I got a co-host. Let's go to uh, let's go to Janice in New York, who's on line four. Line four, Janice. Good morning. Oh, good morning, Raheem. Thank you for taking my call, and it's great to hear from Steve again. Glad that he is on the program. Hey, hey um, Janice. Good to hear your voice again. Well, thank you. You know, I've called in a couple of times. Um, oh, you used I, to beat uh, you used to you used to beat me up regularly during the uh, during the uh, during the primaries. I remember. I remember <laughs> oh, the sound of your voice. You remember? Yeah, just like just like one of my just like an ex-wife. I, certain voices <laughs> I never forget. <laughs> well, thank you. I I'm, I I'm, I feel very uh, honored when you say that. But um, anyway, I just wanted to make a couple of comments um, about the NFL protests. Mm. I, I'm, I'm certainly an individual who defends the right to, uh, for people to have free speech and to express their opinions. But I really do find it pretty offensive that this group of, of privileged few are so disrespectful to the people who actually give them the right to to uh, stand up and protest. J- and Janice, we, 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 Janice, we got a ton of calls. I want to be quick on the trigger. Let me ask you a point blank question. They've accused President Trump of making this racially you know, motivate. Do you think this is? Do you think this has a racial subtext to it? Do you think this is in your mind? Do you think this is racial at all? No, not at all. Why? Not why do you say? Why? Why do you? Why do you say that? And I, I don't know. I just, uh, I, I just think that, uh, you know, Trump is an honest guy. I mean, he he just gives people their due. And, and well, how does uh, it? How does it set with you when you see people not respecting the uh, American flag and not respecting the national anthem? How does it set with you? No, oh, it, it does not sit well with me at all. I think people need to call their local politicians and, and tell them they'll, they'll uh, work to vote them out if they give any taxpayer money to, you know, for stadiums and things like that. Uh, will you, what, what will it take, what, you will not, I take it you're not going to watch NFL football, you're not going to go to NFL games right now where this continues? No, no, I, I will not. What, what, what would it take, what would it take for the players, what would it take to get you, what would it take to get Janice in New York back to watch a National Football League game or go to a stadium? What would it take? Well, I think that they just need to stand up. I think that, you know, since since we're into this whole political correctness thing, I think that they need to, to stand up and apologize. Uh, you know they are. They're, they're just so hold on. I just want to get. This, I just want to get it right because you're saying that for for you to support the NFL again, to, for you to support the players, to go to the games, to to watch TV where all the money comes from, you would need you would need an apology from the players for doing that before you did that again. Yes. Yes. Do you think I, you'll I, be, I, you think you'll, you'll think you'll be getting that? Uh, I doubt I'll be going to many games in in the near future. <laughs> Janice, thanks for calling. Great to hear your voice. Really, really, uh, really appreciate it. You say this, Steve. You you, yep. you mentioned that uh, you know there's this racial. There seems to be people floating this racial element to this uh, this whole thing, right? Ryan Lizza from the uh, New Yorker and and and, and contributed to CNN tweets yesterday. It's now had fifty six thousand retweets on this, right? This wow. is this has gone around out there. Wow. He says Trump has now attacked Jamel Hill, Colin Kaepernick, and Steph Curry. All have something in common, but can't quite put my finger on it um yeah but what about what, yeah. what about megan kelly what about rosie o'donnell what about mitt romney what about ted cruz you know it's easy to be selective what in your point there is this guy this guy is driving a racial wedge through an issue that they, they you know it's just d- d- donald trump is, 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 is as far as i'm concerned he's a non-discriminatory attacker right he will attack people that he feels are either attacking him or attacking the united states but these guys are trying to drive a racial wedge this is cnn this is the new you, yorker you, you think you think that this is uh, very much just about respect for the american flag or you know, respect for the tradition of standing and showing respect uh during the national anthem I think President Trump went through a bad uh, patch with the whole DACA thing. I think he needed he needed people his base to get fired up again. I think he saw what was going on here. Uh, not only does he, I think he believes it, by the way, but I think this was a, a a calculated move at this point in time to rally the base. We got the new travel ban in last night, Steve. Yes. Another thing that can that that, that will bring people back in. You should have heard this show. 
two weeks ago when we were talking about DACA, people were saying, I'm ter- they were burning their hats. They were saying, I'm done with this president. This president needed to do things. He did it at the United Nations. He gave people red meat. He's doing it again here. I'm not saying, I'm not, you know, I'm not being, I'm not being a, 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 a cynic here. I know that this is going on. We know this is how these things work. I believe he believes all these things. The question that Nigel had earlier on in the show was, is it wise to be picking all these fights when he's got so much else going on right now? Well, I think these. I think he feels these are fundamental. I think he feels respect for the American flag and respect for uh, the tradition of standing uh, and showing respect during the national anthem. You know, Donald Trump is a very traditional uh, guy in this regard, so I think that's where he's seeing. I don't think he's look. I don't think he's going out of his way uh, to try to pick fights. But that's mm-hmm. you know, that's, we'll have to see how this thing plays out. I think it's going to be a quite. A, I think there's going to be another one. That's going to be another issue that uh, that dominates uh, dominates several news cycles. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, just another segment left to go here on Breitbart News Daily this morning. 866-957-2874 is the number here. 866-95-PATRIOT. We're broadcasting live out of Point Clear, Alabama today. Big rally tonight. Stephen K. Bannon, Nigel Farage, Phil Robertson, Judge Roy Moore rallying a day ahead of that massive Senate primary race, ladies and gentlemen. And Steve, when we come back, I want to ask you the following question. I've got the following question for you when we come back. Think about this over the course of the I'm break. so rusty now. I'm so rusty I've, now. You're teaming up. I've got, I've, got, I've, like I've got to give you three minutes to think about it. <laughs> would, 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 will, will the Senate leadership fund put half as much money when Roy Moore wins Whoa. and he has to fight the Democrat Whoa. in December? Will the Senate leadership fund stump up even seven million, five million, two million? <laughs> Anything Stephen like Law, this is a call. This is a question for Stephen Law, but we'll answer when we get Stephen back. Law ducks interviews. We all know that. He, he pulls out a fox when Dr. Sebastian Gorka's on. He did that the other day in case you guys missed that. We're here live in uh, Clear Point, Alabama, waiting for the big rally tonight for in support of uh, Judge Rory Moore. Uh, you know, our lead in talks about lo- from local elections. This a local election has national implications, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is uh, the little guy, the hobbits standing up against the machine. Uh, it's the same uh, fight everywhere throughout the world. Uh, tonight you're seeing it in Mobile, Alabama. Tomorrow you'll see it in the entire state of Alabama as people go to the polls. It's very symbolic, and I think Raheem is one of the reasons that we've gotten uh, so involved in this thing. And once again, I'm very proud of Bright Party. This is one that, you know, six, eight weeks ago we were telling the world that this is going to be very important. And now you see the top reporters from The Guardian, The Financial Times, NHK, BBC, CCTV. Global media is here today. Right, it's just going to be and going to be dozens of them there right. tonight as well covering this thing. Well, this global, is, me, global media is going to be here in, in Mobile. I don't know what's. I think I think we've had a little shift. Uh, the, uh, is, uh, are they going to the VPs thing? They're coming down here to the Phil Robertson. I don't, the Phil Robertson. I think Nigel Farage was the key to bring folks down to the. Uh, are you you're saying that? Not, I don't think anybody's taking the VP live now. Don't come on. <laughs> Nick Ayers is Nick Ayers. Calling Nick Ayers. Can we get Nick Ayers on the line? Flu? Okay, so a couple things. Number one, yeah. uh, I'm going to get to your question in a second. Um, also, I want to tell, in the next uh, hour, you got uh, Kerry Pickett's going to be uh, subbing for uh, our dear friend David Webb on the David Webb show that follows Breitbart News uh, Daily here on Sirius XM 125, the Patriot Channel. Um, and, uh, you know, Kerry, I think I heard is printing out some materials. Hey, Paul, you just got to tell Kerry. All you got to do to go to Breitbart News, go to the homepage. That's show prep for talk radio throughout the country. Uh, Paul Nealon called in earlier. He's going to be here at the rally tonight, too. Paul, who gave that very courageous uh, fight against uh, Speaker Ryan uh, last year and actually forced Speaker Ryan to, to bail on TPP during the campaign. Paul Nealon had a huge impact on, uh, on that campaign in 2016. I saw Paul yesterday uh, and Scott Wagner, who's running for a governor of uh, Pennsylvania, as a Trump, uh, a Trump-like figure uh, in St. Louis, I was uh, honored to get the award from uh, Phyllis Sh- Straffley's organization, uh, the Evil Award. What a great group out there! And I got to tell you, for all the folks out there in the in the, in the uh, Breitbart News radio um, listenership, they are fired up in St. Louis. I tell you, these are hardworking people. This fight does not stop. You got to understand something. You're going to have to fight every day to take your country back. No one election is going to do it. November 8, uh, 2016. Uh, didn't do it. Uh, tomorrow's not going to do it. You know, you got to win those. We got to keep winning, but we can't. Uh, we can't think that just because we're we're winning, it's all going to go our way. You got to fight. Uh, you got to fight thing, every day. We 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 got a little bit complacent. I think you know, early part of this year. I think the deed is done. Same thing with the Brexit vote, right? I think I think complacent. I think is uh, is UKIP too. Yeah. I mean, when we first saw you guys, it was scrappy. It was yep. tough. It was fight. You got fourteen percent. Yeah. The same as by the way, very important news out there. Watch what happened to ADF yesterday. You yeah. see, you see this shocking thing. 
you know, of, of someone I'm no fan of, which is Angela uh, Merkel. <laughs> um, and, um, and, and she's no fan of Stephen K. Bannon. <laughs> but we had uh, Raheem, you saw you guys got 14%. Yeah. And, of course, it's not proportional representation. So you only end up, I think, with one member in parliament. Mm. The UKIP's hit a little bit of an air pocket. Mm. Uh, UKIP's uh, issues are, are Raheem was able to come back with. But I think we'll see UKIP, as I've told you guys from day one, to reboot. Yeah. And I think it's you got to keep momentum. You got to keep focus. Let's go back to the Stephen Law question. It's unacceptable yeah. that these donors think they can come in and destroy uh, a good man like uh, Judge Roy Moore. Mm. And as Lisa, some of the callers said earlier, Roy Moore is not perfect individual. People, we know that. Everybody knows that. There's no perfect individuals. Uh, and um, you know, there was only one perfect individual in throughout human history. And so it's um, it's uh, you know we're going to have imperfect candidates. Judge Roy Moore is a righteous man. He's a good man. Uh, it's one of the reasons that, you know, Breitbart uh, got, you know, got very focused on this race because we we saw what was coming, you know, eight weeks ago. We saw what was coming to basically destroy the candidacies of people like Mo Brooks, who is a great patriot, and people like Judge uh, Judge Roy Moore. So um, uh, let's take some calls. You, you, you don't think they're going to put a single penny Senate Leadership Fund? They're going to have to. I mean, you're going to, there's going to be an uprising. I think, by the way, I think some of the donors, I think some of the large donors of Mitch McConnell are really questioning. Mm. And if Mitch McConnell and Stephen Law and that posse do not think they're getting questioned, they're getting questioned by their biggest donors. Uh, I happen to know this personally, uh, that they're getting questioned big donors, why they came in so strong. And I think for all the listeners out there um, that uh, should understand, they're afraid of you, right? That's why they came in so over the top in this campaign. Mm. What a campaign in Alabama, a primary like this, should cost a couple of million bucks, right? right? And now you got thirty what, over $30 million in both rounds being spent by the Luther Strange uh, forces. I mean, uh, you, you, just, you just should not be in a situation where the president's coming down, the vice president's coming down, the former White House chief strategist is coming down, uh, uh, Doug Sebastian Gorka, Sarah Palin, uh, uh, Nigel Farage is flying 4,000 miles across the world right. for it. You know, this, this is, shouldn't be the case, but it is the case because Mitch McConnell forced it to be the case. Yeah. And he forced it to be the case because he is not just terrified of you, he has contempt for you. He has contempt for what you guys believe in. Line six, Jeannie is in Pennsylvania. Jeannie, good morning. Good morning. This is a wonderful surprise this morning. I told you guys last <laughs> night, didn't I? I said, to, I said to you guys last night, I got a very special surprise for you tonight. I didn't tell you what it was going to be. I bet you that didn't think it was going to be this. <laughs> but this, I have been dubbed in my local area, the, the alternative view queen. And uh, <laughs> last week or the, a couple weeks ago, I called in about, about the DACA and the, uh, Donald Trump and how we just need to sit back and watch an uh, mm. amazing person work his magic. And it's the same way. I just wanted to call in to talk to all of the Alabama voters. We're not letting Trump down. We have to look at it as far as him as a man and what he's done as a person and his art of the deal and all of that other stuff that I am so 100% behind him about. He has more faith in us as his voters. So he can go make these deals and, and look like he's partying on the other side, but he knows that the, that the voters in Alabama are going to do the right thing, no matter who right. he stands on a platform and says he's behind. Right. That's this is, my this, view. Is, is, and this, I, is, I have a lot of, I hear a lot of the Alabama voters and people calling in saying they don't want to disappoint Trump. If you vote right. for Luther Strange, you're going to disappoint Donald Trump. Jeannie, thank you so much for the call. I think that sums it up better than any analyst right there. Mm. Is that the, the, the it's the it's the it's the wisdom of the voters of Alabama. And I think if you do what's right in your heart, then you're supporting Donald Trump. Uh, I think this is going to come down to um, basically uh, very bad information and uh, misinterpretation of some basic information uh, it, to, to President Trump. Uh, the reason he got in this situation. But uh, yeah, I think you uh, you vote your heart. You vote your heart. You do the right thing. Uh, it's going to turn out right. So, uh, and I think you're seeing this play out right now in Alabama. You know, Steve, you come on uh, today, and suddenly the board is full of female types. Hey, just saying, you know, this is, you know, just it's my <laughs> animal charisma. That's what it is. That's, Raheem, I thought they told me that the show had gone to all female callers. <laughs> all female guests. All female guests. <laughs> right, right. Nancy's on line five in New York. Nancy, good morning. Hi, good morning. Thank you so much for taking my call, Steve. Hey, Nancy. It's a pleasure to hear you back. Uh, well, it's, it's a pleasure to hear Nancy. It's a pleasure to hear you and all, all the folks out there that are, are, are listeners to the show. It's really great to be back and great to hear yes. your voice. And no disrespect to the capable uh, people you had in charge since you've been gone, but uh, it's quite a pleasure to see that you're back. Um, Thank you, ma'am. I, I, I can't help but feel that 
this is all on Barack Obama's shoulders in terms of the racial rhetoric that just gets injected into every you took, You're talking about NFL here? You're talking about NFL, NFL here? I'm sorry, mm. yes. Okay, um, yep. I, I, Colin Kaepernick, he started this last year, and, and it, it, it seems as though during the eight years of Obama, it just... The, the racial tensions just escalated to the point now where I, I just have no idea where this is going to he- end up. It, it just, it, race is injected into everything. And I think the blame for that falls directly on his shoulders. He, Colin Kaepernick felt that he, this was acceptable to do during his. So let me ask you, Nancy, but Nancy, okay, okay, can we, can, why are you still picking on on President Obama? Had he been out, out of office for almost nine months now? Why, why just connect the dots here? Just why do you, why do you blame President Obama for, for what's happening in the NFL? Because I feel that he ran for president with, an, with a purpose, that he was able to pretty much accomplish that purpose, and that was to divide the country. Along whatever lines that he okay, Nancy. Let me let me take it, Nancy. Hand. Let me take it a different way. People are accusing President Trump of having a dog whistle to all his, uh, you know, to all his, uh, you know, cracker base. You know that really that the, these NFL players are, you know, you know. I think the NFL's, I don't know, if predominantly but a majority of black players, and that this was a dog whistle of Donald Trump to come down here to Alabama on Friday night and give a dog whistle to his basically hate-filled, the hate-filled mob. That follows Donald Trump. Do you do you buy that? The the dog, I mean the hateful mob. What the American? Yeah, yeah the, the the dog. The, it's a the, dog whistle the, to people like you that are really yeah. haters, right below the surface. But, but we're just Americans, you know. And mm. and I bet you a lot of us weren't even on the Trump train from the very beginning. But but he's trying to do the the, the job um, better than any of the other candidates I think could have ever withstood this. And and yet. It, it's constantly the charges that are leveled at him just don't even make sense, especially from me who comes from New York. I, Donald Trump's been in the news for, for 30 years that I, I've had to, you know, listen to and, and, and know about. Uh, he's never, ever been, a, you know, uh, I've never seen evidence of, of any of the charges mm-hmm. that are mm-hmm. leveled at him today yeah. that, that he could ever, you know, be, be right. You know, support it's the same thing they do to Bright Boss. The same thing they do to Steve yeah, as well. Na- Nancy, thank you so much for a call. Great to hear your voice again. Raheem, what do you got? It's the same thing they did to you. It's the same thing they did to me. It's the same thing they did to Nigel. They don't have arguments. And so, you know, the only thing they got left is the same thing they're doing to Judge Roy Moore right now, by the way. It's just an attack on his character. You know, this man was removed from the branch twice. Yeah, but why? You know, because he stood up for God, because he stood up for country. Yeah, they don't finish the second part of that sentence there, Steve. See, we've only got uh, a, a couple minutes until uh, until the end of the show here. Yeah. Uh, and I just want to get your vibe on on, on, on this race, um, on, 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 you know, on what's been going on over the last uh, uh, couple of days down here, what we expect to see. See tonight. I think I think one thing, Raheem, it's it, this is a global phenomenon right now. The the political universe, the political universe is uh, the political universe is uh, is uh, all centered here in Mobile, Alabama. I mean, it's it's amazing. You got the top reporters, the top political reporters throughout the world are all down here. Whether that's from Atlantic Magazine, whether that's from uh, whether that's from Atlantic Magazine, or whether that's from the BBC, the Financial Times of London. Uh, you know the uh, all the all the Washington Post, New York Times. So this is a this is a national race with global implications. And what I mean by that is this is the little guy. There's not one penny of donor money in the Roy Moore campaign. This wow. is the little guy. This is this is corporate uh, money versus uh, grassroots muscle, right? And we're going to see how it plays out tomorrow. I mean, some of the polls are trending. It looks like 